It's the 11th of November today, and although we are right in the end of autumn, I came across this beautiful oak, which we thought could be put in a pot. And it's still got its lovely leaves on. And my colleague here, Padma Priya, was working on it. And I suddenly said to myself, why are we wasting this lovely opportunity to show you what we do with this oak? Now, let me just tell you something about this oak. This oak is every bit, I would say, six inches in diameter at the base. The tree is about a meter tall. And what we did, this was growing in our field for many years. And all we did was to chop the tree down. We let it grow to about 10 or 12 feet. It was grown in this large, I think this is a, I think 70, 70 liter pot and that would be about 60 centimeter across at the top. So it's a large pot. So we dug it up from the ground and all I did was to chop it at the top there. Can you see that severe chop? That chop was done about say five years ago and it was continued to be allowed to grow in the ground. And it was about two years ago that we put it in that pot and look at all those lovely, lovely roots that have formed. In fact, there's so many roots that I've had to take some of those thick roots off. So that big thick root, can you pull it out? I think we've cut it off. We don't need all that because we are now going to get it into a bonsai pot. We'll use a mica pot. There are some sacrificial branches at the bottom, although they look quite nice while they're there. So we'll keep that. So all we've done is cut the top and the branches at the top have been trimmed back and no great shaping or styling has been done. But I thought I'd show you this because it's a very natural image of an oak. Many people criticize us for making deciduous trees look like pines. I'm aware of that. In fact, a lot of my maples are not made in the pine shape. They're made like maples. Now this tree is an oak and when we put it in the mica pot and finish the potting, I will show you the image. And I can show you it will be a lovely tree. So I thought I'd just capture this operation because there's so many things we do on the nursery that we think are mundane and boring to people. But uh, you might find it interesting. So I will show you the finished image when we've potted this in the pot. Okay, the thick roots you can cut. There are enough fine roots there, so we can cut some of the very thick fat roots. So it's got to go back to about where we've cut these Yes. Ones. Yeah. Now I'm just going to show the soil. This is really our garden loam or the soil that is found naturally on the nursery. And we've just added a tiny little bit of sand to it. But oaks tend to like a loamy soil, so I don't think we would pot it in our standard compost which has a lot of acadama and grit because that soil is more suitable for pines. So I will use this soil again, which is mainly a loam based soil with some sand in it. So you can't always use the standard bonsai compost for every species. So we've just got to observe how these trees grow in nature and go with the flow as they say. We're just taking out one of these thick roots and we've cut it off so you must be wondering whether doing this would damage the tree and the answer is no because the rest of the tree has a lot of these beautiful fibrous fine roots so taking off the odd thick one that one is well over an inch thick, as you can see. It's well over an inch thick. Let's pull it out and see how much fine root is attached to it. So it's quite safe to do this. That's right, underneath the pizza. So it's going all the way around. Yes, look at that. So we're taking all that off. And some of these we can take off his work and put those back to fit the pot. Secretaries are looking. Yes, that's coming off. 
All these roots have grown in the flower pot after transplanting and you can see in just three years they form these very big thick roots. They go round and round in the pot. So these deciduous trees are very vigorous. So you, you can see there are lots of very fine feeder roots and this is what will sustain the tree. Even this can come off, this one. And this too. So by doing that we're going to encourage more of the finer roots to grow. Let's stand it up and see if it now fits. There's a little way to go yet. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, not far off. Which this is, we're using this as fun, but it's too far to the back, it isn't, is, it? isn't it? So we do need that a... pot is okay. We could try the next size up. How about try these? We we'll try some other ones. Just place it in front of it, try to see. This would be ideal. That seems to be a bit big, but I think it would be more comfortable for the tree. Let's use this one. As you know of my views, I always feel that in Japan, especially the Finnish bonsai, they tend to underpot. The trees are far too large for the bonsai pot in which they are planted. But since this is still a tree in training, I don't mind using slightly larger pots. These are the lovely mica pots that we started importing. More towards the front because it's most of the roots are in the front, it looks odd. I think slightly more to the right anti clockwise a bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. That's fine. Okay. That's better. Now that's a grand tree. That's a really grand looking tree. Beautiful, beautiful. Happy with that? Yeah. I think if you can pull it forward a little more, yeah, take, take some soil, yeah. so there's not too much at the back. Yeah. Certainly up to here, up yeah. to the limit. They may need to cut that. Yeah. Right, we still have a lot of decisions to make because this tree, most of the roots are in our front and very little at the back. The back is what we call like a pigeon breast, there's nothing there. So all the roots are towards the front. And to make it sit centrally in the pot, we'll have to take some of these very thick roots off. So if you just pull this root out and let's see, this, this root here, if you can pull this. This is fouling its position in the pot. And because there are not a lot of fine roots attached to this long parsnip type root, we're going to cut it maybe over here at that point. So we're going to do that. I think this process terrifies a lot of beginners because they think that if you cut too much, the tree won't survive. But there are still quite a lot of lovely fibrous roots there so I have every confidence that it will take. So let's try it in the pot now, Padma Priya. Let's close it, let's put it more upward. So I think that should be okay. We're going to mound the soil a bit. We're not going to cut any more root at the bottom. So we'll mound the tree and that should be okay. So we'll pot it up and we'll just tie it with some I think three mil wire, two, that means two wires, one, two pairs of wires. And so we're preparing this mica pot and this is my lazy way of doing it. People will criticize me instead of using individual pieces. I can't be bothered using individual pieces. So I just laid a large piece of this uh, green mesh at the bottom, put two pairs of wires and we're putting back the original soil, which is a loam soil, loam based soil. So no fancy acadam or other soil. I don't think it needs it. So, okay, that's fine. A 
pull it as close to the front as possible. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Let me just see it's... I think it needs to go slightly to the right, a couple of inches to the right. Maybe back half <laughs> an inch or an inch. But keep it in the, towards the front, okay. Oh, that's just because of that right hand branch. Okay, okay, tighten. Can you do it one single handed? Now just putting back some of the original soil which is our nursery loam. There is a lot of leaf mold in the soil that's why it's so dark in color. Leaf mold is quite important. Many bonsai peers don't talk about leaf mold and other organic matter they just concentrate on the quality of the drainage but leaf mold is important if you're an ordinary gardener you will realize that basic things like leaf mold humus all play an important role in the health of the plant the reason why our plants are so healthy is because we do that so we've tried to get it as central as possible but because the thick roots are all growing towards the front we will do it in stages and now we're going to just put some sphagnum moss on the side here because I want some new roots to come. We just pile it like a little mountain and then cover it with soil on top of that. So that's going to encourage more new roots to form to get a better nebari. A lot of people ask about nebari, but nebari is a tedious long process. So this is what some of the things we do to encourage new roots on one side that doesn't have much root growing. So there you are, the moss is underneath, so that will encourage the roots to grow. And we just fill the rest of the pot with soil. This oak is so natural. Look at the oak apples. In case you don't know what oak apples are, this is a, I think a little wasp that goes into the oak apple and inhabits it. So this tree has got two, three, five oak apples growing. So natural, absolutely natural tree. No, six, seven, there's seven oak apples. I'm just going to trim the top of that tree because there's too much to the right hand side but because I cannot do it with me holding the camera I'm going to put the camera down for a while while I trim it and then show it to you again. Yep. So before I sign off I'll just show you the debris and the debris is these roots that we've taken off. Can you see we've taken off quite a lot of root. So. They're mainly thick roots, very, very thick roots. Some of them are thick like that. So these didn't have very much fibrous root. So we haven't taken off much fibrous root, but this is what we've taken off. That is that large 60 centimeter diameter pot in which it was growing. And that is the ordinary nursery soil in which the tree was growing in which as I said to you was mainly the garden loam from our nursery and a lot of leaf mold. And how long did this take? This didn't take even half an hour to do. So here we are. 
I will just ask my colleague now to hold the phone while I just give it a tiny trim at the top. I couldn't trim too much because there's a branch at the back which is quite thick and by chopping that I created more density there. But I will deal with it. My colleague Parmapriya is now just doing a little guy wire to pull this branch down. This is English oak. And this is probably an offspring of some of the large oaks that are growing on our nursery. Here we have some five or six large oaks which are supposed to be about two to three hundred year old. I think this bit, I didn't want to cut too much because I did chop it there. But I know I have to take something off. It's going to produce such a lot of new shoots that I will be able to create the perfect shape later on. It's still a bit too much that side, but I don't want to take too much off. So I've hardly touched the tree. Our pruning is concerned. And there we go. In half an hour we have created the tree, an English oak, mighty English oak. I know that the tree needs more cutting off there, but I'll probably do it next year. Once the tree will become too bare. So I hope you liked it and I'm glad we managed to video this because we were just going to do it as part of our routine nursery chore. There are many chores like this which we do and some of you have asked me to strap a camera on my chest and go around filming it. I know I'd love to do it but it's not always possible. So I hope you enjoyed the creation of this large oak. We have lots of large oaks on the nursery. They are much more interesting than tiny little ones. I'll just show you another little oak. This is a little, tiny little acorn that grew and I dare say this is about maybe possibly three years old because it was cut there and then it was cut there. Originally it was just a straight tree like that but I decided to put a piece of wire and give it a quirky shape. So that's another oak. So oaks make very nice bonsai. Not many people think of using oaks but they're lovely trees. So this and this are from the same big tree that grows in our nursery car park. So thank you very much.